Materials in Unreal Engine define the surface properties of the objects in your scene. In the broadest sense, you can think of a material as the paint that is applied to a mesh to control its visual appearance. In more technical terms, materials tell the render engine exactly how a surface should interact with the light in your scene. Materials define every aspect of the surface including color, reflectivity, bumpiness, transparency, and so on. These calculations are done using data that is input to the material from a variety of images, textures, and node-based material expressions, as well as from various property settings inherent to the material itself. In this video series we will see how we can create materials for various meshes. So let's start creating a new material. Materials in Unreal are an asset class just like static meshes, textures, or blueprints. You can create new materials from the content browser. So right click in the content browser. Now select material in the create basic asset session of the context menu. A material is created in the content browser. Give it a unique and descriptive name. Say Noom. Double click the material asset to begin editing the material. The material editor window opens. The highlighted region is called the material graph. And this is where you will do the majority of your work while creating materials. The material graph in a new material is empty except for the main material node. Now we will see some of the material properties. When the main material node is selected, the global properties and settings for the material display in the details panel. Three of these settings are particularly important at the beginning of the material creation process as they form the underlying foundation of a material and dictate how it can be used. Three material properties control which inputs are enabled in the material. Blend mode. This controls how your material blends with the pixels behind it. Shading model. This defines how light is calculated for the surface of the material. Material domain. This dictates how the material is intended to be used. For instance, whether it is meant to be part of a surface, a light function, or a post-process material. If an input you need for your material is disabled, it is because one or more of the above properties is set incorrectly. For example, if you are trying to make a pane of glass, but the opacity input is disabled. The solution in that example is to change the blend mode to translucent. Let's see one by one. First is material domain. This defines what the material will be used for in your project. For example, surface, user interface, and post-process materials are different material domains. Then comes blend mode. This defines how the material blends with the pixels behind it. For example, opaque shaders completely occlude objects behind them, whereas translucent and additive shaders blend with the background in some way. Last is shading model. This defines how the material interacts with light. Very often your materials will simply use the default lit shading model. However, Unreal Engine includes specific shading models for things like hair, cloth, and skin which provide context-specific inputs to make it easier to create those types of surfaces. These properties determine exactly which inputs are enabled on the main material node. In the example, Opacity is grayed out because the opaque blend mode does not support transparency. If you select the translucent blend mode, the opacity input is available, and several inputs that were previously enabled are grayed out. When you create a new material, it is recommended that you configure these three properties first. Then comes all the available inputs on the main material node. By feeding data, by way of constants, parameters, and textures, into these inputs, you can define the surface properties of your material and create an almost infinite variety of physical surfaces. Not all inputs are required for every material, and some material types require inputs that are not visible on the main material node by default. Now start with inputs and material properties. When you change certain material properties in the details panel, you will notice that some inputs on the main material node turn white, indicating that they are enabled, while others are grayed out. Now look at base color. Base color defines the overall color of the material. In principle, 
Base color should represent the diffuse light reflected off a surface, minus any specular reflections, highlights. Base color defines the overall color of the material, taking in a vector 3, RGB, value where each channel is automatically clamped between 0 and 1. So holding on number 1 and left click, gets you vector 1. Where 0 represents absolute dark or no light, and 1 represents light. And if you want to change the color, other than white. Hold on number 3, and left click, get you vector 3. Where you can change the base color as per likings. Now save the material, without saving, the material effect will not be visible in the world. And then go to the world, and apply the newly created material onto the geometrical shape. To create another material, just duplicate the new material created, and name it differently. Then comes metallic. The metallic input controls how, metal-like, your surface will be. Metallic accepts any value between 0 and 1 but in a majority of cases metallic is considered an either, or property. So non-metals have a metallic value of zero. And the metals have a metallic value of one. For pure surfaces, such as pure metal, pure stone, or pure plastic this value will be zero or one, not anything in between. When creating hybrid surfaces like corroded, dusty, or rusty metals, you may find that you need some value between zero and one. When using metallic masks, the values in the texture should be pure black or pure white. Only use grayscale values if you specifically mean to create a blend, corroded metal, for example. The sphere on the far left has a metallic value of 1 and a roughness value of 0 so it appears to be very shiny. The sphere on the far right, however, has a metallic value of 1 and a roughness value of 1. This gives the metal a very dull look like it has been used quite a bit. Next comes the specular. Specularity is a measure of how much light a surface reflects. The specular input takes a value between 0 and 1, and defines the extent to which a surface is reflective. The value of 0 means the fully non-reflective surface. And the value of 1 means the fully reflective and the default value is 0.5 which represents approximately 4% reflectivity. Specular can also have an effect on the shininess of a material. Pushing the specular value closer to 1 will make the reflections and specular highlights in the material appear stronger and more apparent while lowering that value closer to 0 will weaken the reflections and specular highlight until they are almost non-existent. Here is an example showing how the intensity of the reflections and specular highlight are affected as the specular value is changed from 0 to 1. Here is the measured specular values of some common articles. Next comes the input roughness. The roughness input controls how rough or smooth a material surface is. Rough materials scatter reflected light in more directions than smooth materials. This value controls how blurry or sharp a reflection is, or how broad or tight a specular highlight is. A roughness of zero i.e. smooth, results in a mirror-like reflection. A roughness of one i.e. rough, results in a diffuse or matte surface. Most surfaces are not uniformly rough or smooth. Roughness is a property that is frequently mapped on your objects in order to add physical variation to the surface. Scratches on metal, scuffs on a wood floor, or fingerprints on plastic are examples of materials that would require a roughness map. A roughness of zero, that is, smooth surface, results in a mirror-like reflection. A roughness of one, that is, rough surface, results in a diffuse or matte surface. Here is this example. Roughness is show from 0 to 1 on two different articles. Say plastic on top and metal on bottom. 
so you get mirror-like reflection on metal and, a diffuse or matte surface, of metal, and a similar effect on no metal objects. So roughness is mapped here on your objects in order to add the most physical variation to the surface. Hope this video helps you to initiate your journey into the creative world of Unreal Engine. Please like this video if you find it helpful and informative, and subscribe to our channel for newer updates and game development tutorials. Thanks, thanks a lot, see you in the next video.